Hello and welcome back to another Celtics post-game report. An easy blowout win for the Celtics against the Memphis Grizzlies, who were missing 10 guys to injury. But the story of the night falls on Marcus Smart and his return to TD Garden for the first time after being traded last summer. I will talk about that and about how the Celtics should finish off their season on a high note and get ready for the playoffs. Thank you for watching this video. Your ongoing support is extremely valued. Please check out my website where you can find NBA news, highlights, standings, and of course, everything to do with the Boston Celtics as they strive for Banner 18. The link is in the description or you can search yourcelticsource.com. Thank you for watching this video. Your ongoing support is extremely valued. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok so you don't miss out on highlights, game times, stats, and Boston Celtics content. Subscribe and share this video with your friends and family and do not forget to comment down below with your questions, comments, and concerns regarding the Boston Celtics. Just to quickly summarize the story of the game, the Memphis Grizzlies are in such a miserable state in terms of injury that they needed to call up a majority of G League players just to fill their roster for the next month or so. The Celtics took advantage of this, unlike Thursday's loss against the Lakers. Chris Saps Brzingis often had a 5'7 guy on him in the post due to four switches caused by the Celtics. The Celtics just handed him the ball to drop it in the basket. The entire game, in fact, was about creating favorable matchups, and it was easy to do it without the help of the Memphis Grizzlies' top players. Jason Tatum got his 34 points through three quarters by taking a lot of mid-range fadeaways and contested threes. Now, obviously, these shots were easier given the lack of defense from the Grizzlies, but I was so surprised why Tatum did not take the opportunity to improve his skills in the paint. It was also great to see Jordan Walsh get his first career points in the NBA with a great cut and vicious dunk off of a beautiful assist from O'Shea Brissett. Maine has taught him the Missoula way as he is always looking to make one extra pass even when he was somewhat open. The fans cheered every time he got a rebound or made an assist and of course they went wild for his first slam. He could actually be a useful late bench player in the remaining regular season to give some guys a rest. As I've mentioned before on an earlier video, his energy is great and he is greatly spirited. Like everyone on the Celtics, and most certainly like one special guy who wears the number 36. Marcus Smart was honored for his nine years as a Boston Celtics with a heartwarming tribute video played on the Jumbotron. It included some of his most memorable plays 
on both ends of the floor, as well as some of his quotes about playing defense. He was the one that truly redefined defense for the Celtics, making it the main priority of the team. But Marcus Smart was also known for the things he did off the court. Since the draft day, Smart has spent hours in the hospital around Boston visiting young kids who are battling various illnesses. Making someone's day was always on the top of his mind, making him a great role model for young kids growing up watching the Celtics. Later in the second half, the Celtics rewarded him with that night's Hero Among Us honor to cement his commitment to the city of Boston and to every Celtics fan watching. I'm not going to get into why it was time to move on from him, but there are moments in every game where we could use a player like him. I really hope he is able to help the Memphis Grizzlies next season along with a healthy John Moran or wherever he goes next. Alright, let's move on to how the Celtics should finish off their last 31 games and hold on to the number one seed and therefore home court advantage for the entire playoffs. The Celtics are currently 39-12 and after last night's win against the Atlanta Hawks. That's a 76% win percentage. If the Celtics continue to win at that rate, the Celtics will win 62 games. First of all, that's an unbelievable record, and no one signed up for that when making the trades for Christos Rizegas and Drew Holiday last summer. Second of all, this win percentage will make it extremely difficult for other teams in the East to catch up. The Cleveland Cavaliers, who are the next best team, will have to finish off the season 32-2. and The Bucks and the Knicks will have to finish off their season with a 29-2 and record, and the 76ers, who have dropped to fifth place, will have to go on a tear and win 32 out of their last 33 games without Joel Embiid, who is out for at least four weeks and probably more with a knee injury. Not to mention that the Celtics hold the tiebreaker on every one of these teams besides the Bucks, so teams will actually have to win one more game to actually take the top seed. So the Celtics are in great shape to hold on to the top seed if they continue to keep up this win percentage, but that still does not guarantee that they will be playing well. The Celtics have somewhat of an easy schedule to close out the season, so just because they are winning, it does not mean that they are playing at a high enough level to beat a top team in the Eastern Conference in a seven-game series. The Celtics need to continue to use the mismatches Kristaps Przingis creates from his post-ups to generate offense in times when the three-point shooting is off. During this homestand, the Celtics' shots can't seem to find the net, causing games to be much closer than they should be. It's been a while now since the Celtics had a normal shooting night against an average opponent. While the Celtics are generally still finding ways to win, it sometimes hurts us in the crunch against some of the top teams. The games that matter most are these close games against the top teams in the Eastern and Western Conferences. Being able to close out these close games will show the difference between last year's Celtics and this year's Celtics and obviously show that they are the best team in the league this season. By the way, the are still shaping up.